I've used ChatGPT's deep research and things like that for a few things, and this really is a local option very similar to that. For today's video, we're going to be taking an introductory first look at Deerflow by ByteDance. Now, Deerflow was released a few days ago, and basically, as we can see from the GitHub repository right here, it stands for Deep Exploration and Efficient Research Flow. It is a community-driven deep research framework building upon the incredible work of the open source community. So to put it very simply in a TLDR style fashion, this is essentially something that will allow you to have a deep research assistant that runs on your local machine. Now, of course, part of deep research is actually going and searching the web to find things that it will then cite and use to kind of congregate a report for your specific inquiry. However, the cool part about this is that you can actually use a local model running on Olama or pretty much anything if you really want to get into the code, but it is quite simple to get it set up with Olama. So for today, we're going to be using this with Quen 332 b at a Q8 quantization. Really, this does have a ton of different features and I won't be able to go through everything here in this video, but I do want to make note of some really impressive things that this actually allows us to do. If we scroll on down here to some of the features that they show you right here, it can do obviously LLM integration. It has tools and MCP integration, so you can hook this up with MCP servers if you want to have specific things done, which is really cool. In addition to that, and something I find fascinating is it can actually create podcasts or PowerPoints based off of the research it does which I find really cool. So basically, I think from what I saw reading through some of the docs and things like that, their idea was that if you needed to research a topic, it can then basically give you a podcast of that topic. So you can then just go and listen to it later and learn about it. So it just has a ton of really cool things like this. And I will say now that that is one of the upsides of this. I won't call it a downside, but I will say that a potential point of contention for someone wanting to use this themselves is that it can be a little difficult to get set up. And truthfully, one of the downsides of today's video is that some of the things that are required to actually get this set up and running are going to be very specific to your environment, your operating system, your specific machine, your specific hardware. So I'm not going to be showing a start to finish install guide, but we are just going to kind of take a look at this and get a feel for it, see how it functions, some of the additional cool features it has. And I will give some tips on some things that actually kind of I got stuck on, like getting it to work properly with an old llama model, making sure that I could actually have it use the web search functionality without throwing any errors and things like that. So with that, we're basically just going to jump right in and take a look at this actually functioning. And then we'll talk a bit more about it. So from the GitHub repository, if you actually just click on this, our official website link right here, you will see this kind of cool page that opens up and shows. Now, the cool thing is I actually have this running on my local machine right now. So if I just swap over to this tab right here, you will see that it is quite identical, except this is running on localhost at port 3000, or it is being run and hosted on my local machine currently. So what we're going to do now is just go ahead and click the get started button. And this will bring us to Deerflow, our deep research assistant. Now, essentially, you will type your inquiry right here, and assuming you have everything set up properly in terms of the actual search engine that it's going to use and the LLM that it is going to use in conjunction with that, it will go ahead and basically generate a research report for you. Now, I could do one of the sample ones right here, but I never am really too keen on using sample things that come with repositories because I like to test them on quote-unquote unseen data, so that's what we'll do right now. So basically, I've typed in something rather random asking it to generate a report on the best way to get a graphics card at a steep discount. This can be left up to interpretation, but basically as I go right there and send it, first and foremost, we are going to see that the GPU utilization begins to spike. I am running this with Quen 332B at a Q8 quantization using Olama. So as we can see right here, it is actually beginning and running right now. This is all being generated right here locally from the Quen 3 model based off of using Deerflow in conjunction with my prompt and all of the kind of magic that goes on in the background here. So we will see that it is kind of just thinking right now of what it can do. But following this, it will actually go ahead and oh, okay, so it gave me an error, <laughs> which I haven't seen before because I was playing with this. So all right, we got a few validation errors. And unfortunately, I am not quite sure why. So like I said, this is 
Not necessarily the easiest thing to use with a local LLM, but I am going to go ahead and leave this in because it is something you might encounter yourself as well. So basically, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of pretend that didn't happen. We'll click get started and then perhaps maybe we will just go through one of these static examples right here just to see. So, all right. Let's see how many times faster is the speed of light compared to the speed of sound. And then we'll hopefully go ahead and see if we can get a properly generated result. Now, I should mention right here that there are a few different web search options available for us to pick and choose. And I'm sure you could also implement your own as well. However, I am using um, oh, what is the DuckDuckGo right here. And basically what would have happened prior to this if our query had worked well, which we see now, is it kind of gives itself a little plan and then it allows you to either edit the plan or click start research in which it will then go ahead and browse the web and do some research and then formulate its response. So we will just click the start research button right here and it sends that kind of standard looks good, let's start. And then basically the model will go and start doing research. And I should really note, and again, like this is just kind of like a quick, simple look at this, but there is a lot of quote unquote agentic functionality happening behind the scenes here where there's kind of tools and orchestration pipelines and things like that that are guiding what's going on right here. So it is actually really quite intricate and in depth. I think that a deep research agent is a very kind of TLDR way to describe this as there are a lot of cool kind of aspects to it and things like that, even just the podcast generation or the PowerPoint generation, things like that from what it makes here is quite cool. And then again, this is running entirely locally right now. So we can see right here, okay, it is researching right now. You can scroll up here and see uh, we have our thinking tag as this is the Quen 332B model right here. So it is thinking there is a problem statement and then it is showing us some research findings as well. And obviously, in addition to this, it actually does give us some of the references of things that it would have have found online as we always want these things to cite their sources so we can kind of fact check and make sure it wasn't a hallucinated answer. So it has seemingly generated some Python code right here and it is now running it or doing some form of uh, functionality with it. And this is kind of what I mean when I say there is a lot of agentic things going on here. Being that I mean, if we just quickly hop back over here to the GitHub repository for it, there is kind of a graphic or chart down here that talks about the actual architecture of this implementation where there's a coordinator, a planner, human feedback, a research team, there's a coder, there's the researcher. So there are lots of different aspects right here that this is actually orchestrating and handling for us. So again, this is something that even a Quen 332B, which is a fairly robust local model, these will really be pushing the limits of some local models. And that is partially why I think this is kind of shown as being used with like ChatGPT or other types of more frontier lab models, if you will. And we can see right here that it is now thinking again. So seemingly it has done some form of Python calculation. I don't know whether or not it's right. I have not checked, but we can basically see and kind of the whole point I want to drive home in this video is just that all of these different orchestrations and things are happening just through Deerflow right here. And mainly aside from like the web search tool, which we use DuckDuckGo for, which we don't need an API key or anything like that. This is all happening with a local LLM right now, Quen 332B. Um, at a QA quant. So this is just really neat. And there is a ton of expandability that can be built on top of this or played with in conjunction with this. So I didn't really see much coverage on this. And it may just be because it came out recently, but it also may be because it was kind of um, difficult to get working. But all right, so it does seem like right now our report has been generated and we can basically go ahead and click on this. So there are two different tabs here. There's the report tab, which kind of just shows us our generated report and things like that. And then the activities tab seems more like looking in at the actual LLM functioning throughout this entire process to generate our report. So if we scroll down here, that's where we can kind of see some of the more under the hood style things, I suppose you could say. So basically it shows us this right here. Honestly, I'm probably not even going to check to see if any of these answers are correct because <laughs> Again, the video is more about showcasing this architecturally, but it did show us our references. These we are definitely going to just make sure that these are actually legitimate um, live hosted sites and not um, kind of hallucinations as LLMs. I don't know about now, but 
at least in the past, they would hallucinate URLs and things like that as well. They would be quite happy to do that. So these are legitimate websites. Um, I don't know how they're, uh, they might need like a Steve's PC repair HTML fix. But <laughs> so basically, that is just one sample test of how this works at a very basic level. In the settings icon up here in the top right and not in the bottom left right here this is where we could actually go ahead and add in some mcp servers there's an about section there's a general section where we can basically cap the number of plans iterations or steps that happens and this would definitely be something that if you were using an api linked um, llm where you had to pay for the tokens you would want to cap these because you don't want it to just ramble on and use up a ton of tokens which this is very likely doing in some of these steps you can put your servers in here and things like that and it's just really like quite neat. So as I said previously, we were using DuckDuckGo because there was no API key required. So basically it just kind of does the searching for us and we don't have to set up too many things. In addition to that, there is just a ton of other things going on here. They talk about the text-to-speech integration and things like that for podcasting and all of that kind of cool stuff. There is some more information down here about running LangGraph Studio to debug. So you can use it to actually debug and visualize the workflow in real time if you want it to. So there is a ton of stuff right here. So while this won't be a full installation and setup tutorial, I do just want to take a look at a few things that I think are reasonable to note that may assist folks who struggled in areas that I did as well. So basically, if we just scroll down right here, we can see that there are some environment requirements as well as some recommended tools such as UV, um, Python 3.12 plus, and then Node.js with this version. We also will need PNPM because at least for the way I did it, there are two ways to actually go ahead and use this. There is a console only UI where basically instead of the nice aesthetically pleasing web interface like we saw right here, it will just kind of run in the terminal and be, I suppose, more lightweight and I suppose hackerish looking, if you will. But in addition to that, there is also the web UI right here. So you need to install the dependencies of the web UI as well. And basically there is a web directory here you can click on to see like kind of a little more information on doing all of that. And it just kind of gives you more step-by-step -step stuff if you do want to use the web UI as I did as well. And you can also, I should mention, there is a uh, Docker image for this as well that you could probably use but personally I opt to not use docker as I kind of just like doing things this way personal preference but I should note that docker is available now really two things that kind of messed me up when I was trying to set the supported search engines API key I was only going to use DuckDuckGo which didn't need the API key but I was still getting an error that Tavoli did not have an API key so basically what I ended up needing to do is right here in this .env file I just set the search API to equal DuckDuckGo and then the Tavoli API key was set to unused and then for Brave Search I was able to just go ahead and leave that commented out as it didn't throw any form of error and once I had this exactly as it is everything worked quite all right in addition to that to actually set this up with a local model using Olama which is how I am using it I did need to kind of do some troubleshooting in terms of the specific API endpoint um, I suppose layout or setup that was listed in the configuration file so basically right here in this configuration file I have it just as this and to be honest with you I'm just going to massively expand this on the screen so that anyone who is also perhaps struggling with this can just look at this as a reference and see okay this is exactly what worked for him so I will try to emulate this specific syntax for my Olama um, API call. As we can see right here the model I am using is denoted under a basic model and then colon it is quen 332 b at a Q8 quant and again this would be your specific model you want to use in Olama. Um, I would say suggest a Quen 3 model as I tried it with Gemma 327B and there were some issues with like tool usage and things like that. API key is just set to fake and then the URL is set to the default Olama um, 
API URL at 11434. And then the slash V1 is there as well. I had some issues where the slash V1 wasn't there and it was causing problems and things like that. So those are the two setup things that I struggled with that I think it is prudent to kind of show. But beyond that, once all of that was actually properly set up and everything like that, I kind of just went ahead following the web directory setup. And now basically all I have to do with it set up is just go ahead and run this right here in the um, directory that is cloned for Deerflow, of course. And if we go ahead now and go to localhost at port 3000 and then refresh it, we will see that it is loaded up and we can actually go ahead and play with it. So I think maybe I'll just ask it like uh, make an algorithmic trading Python script using web research. I don't know. <laughs> Again, not a full in-depth tutorial on how to get all of these capabilities and everything working, but I did just want to do somewhat of a visual demonstration of this alongside some tips and tricks that I feel would maybe um, get someone caught up, um, mainly about the API keys and the Olama integration, of course. So if I go back right here, okay, so we do have a plan and let's just go ahead and click start research and we'll just kind of give it a little while to go and we'll see what it comes up with if something good. Rate limit. So it is perhaps possible that while DuckDuckGo doesn't require any API keys, maybe this is something you'll run into as well where you get rate limited rather quickly as I've only run a few searches with this prior to the beginning of the video. So that is likely probably going to conclude this. Like I said, I just wanted to do like a first quick look at this because this is really quite cool. I've used ChatGPT's deep research and things like that for a few things. And this really is a local option very similar to that in something that can use a local AI and really could hypothetically, assuming you don't get rate limited, be run for free, quote unquote, obviously um, negating any electricity costs or anything like that. But this is really quite cool. I wanted to cover it and just show some things about it. It can be kind of tricky to get installed. So my best advice for that would be to just take your time, be patient. And if you have problems getting some of these specific things set up in your specific system, just ask Claude or ChatGPT or Gemini or anything like that. And they should hopefully be able to get you through the right steps to do this. Um, with that, that is going to wrap up today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.